I was only taking notes of it's not about the thousands of hours you will pour into one specific language study. Basically copying down the exact contents of like memory retention 101 guys. I've had a lot of coaches over the years, we're talking more than 50 people, is absolutely crucial. So today I want to talk about note taking and specifically taking notes while studying a language. I've come across this subject a lot through the coaching I do on time management and self-studying languages and specifically Japanese. Just so you know, you can always come to see me. I do coaching on the weekends with my coaches. We end up discussing how to take notes effectively and how I did take notes myself when I was studying Japanese over the years. And so this is really a subject that I'm very familiar with because I've tried explaining this so many times to so many different people who didn't have the same uh, perspective on note-taking and, you know, the same need for it. I've had a lot of coaches over the years, we're talking more than 50 people. I realized that I do have now a lot of insights and a lot of things to say about this topic. I hope you like this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a comment below and to like this video. Taking notes over the years and specifically within the last four years of me studying Japanese by myself, I have of course taken a lot of notes and I have come across four realizations, so four years, four realizations, uh, this was not intended. but The first one of them being that if I take notes without an angle, my notes will be useless to me. Basically, the idea is that taking the notes for the sake of taking them and without a specific goal in mind is not an efficient way to proceed at all with note taking. We're talking, you know, for language study in particular, we're talking about basically copying down the exact contents of a textbook, for example, or the exact contents of a video you're listening to. What you end up with is simply a handwritten note of the exact same content that you're studying with without any additional feature or any new kind of structure you're really only acting as a copy machine just ask yourself when you go over these notes again later on what will be the difference between reading the notes you've taken and reading the exact same material on the original resource you were studying with, so on the original textbook or on that video you've watched from YouTube. From my experience, instead, before you decide to take any notes from a study resource or from immersion practice, you should exactly know what you'll be using the notes for. What is the ultimate goal for them? I have some examples of angles to give you because going through different stages of my language learning, I noticed that my goals for note-taking also changed through time. So, so at first, when I was first studying Japanese, I was mainly taking notes to have handwriting practice. From that, gain muscle memory as to how the kanji and the hiragana and katakana were written and that was great for that but over the years that's not the only goal i had it could be to help you to revise for a specific exam improve in one specific area so as i just said for me at first i was taking notes mainly to improve in kanji writing and kanji memorization it can also be common vocab which you're coming across uh, through listening practice for example so i did that a lot i actually talked about this whole process in this video right here about watching the news in Japanese and so what I was doing was basically writing down the new vocab I was coming across. I was only taking notes of the vocab that I didn't yet know at the time. I lacked common vocab and I needed to learn more common words that were coming up all the time. It was not about learning rare vocab at all. It was really about learning common vocab. So I proceeded to create my own study resource into one notebook. When we talk about grammar, and I've been asked this question a lot, actually for grammar, instead of simply taking notes of the grammar points and all of their declinations, how you should transform the verb 
into that sentence for that particular grammar point, you know, to use this particular grammar point. I was taking note of one single example sentence, except if, you know, this particular grammar point was being used in different settings uh, with different nuances. That's pretty much it for, you know, the lesson part of the grammar study I was doing. And then what I was doing was basically writing down my own sentences. The goal I had in mind at that time specifically to practice my own sentences and making sure that I could use by myself the grammar points I was studying. So you get the hang of it. The crucial point is to know what you will use these notes for and what is the specific purpose you're taking them for. Right, so the second thing we should talk about is the structuring of your notes. So we're talking having columns, titles, subtitles, categories, stickers, stamps, post-its, and basically whatever it helps you not only digest the notes, but also like get the most out of it, help with memory retention. This is definitely something that helped me over the years, it's like memory retention 101 guys. It's basic basic memorization technique we're talking mnemonics the basic idea is that you will reformat the information the raw information you have and make it your own let's interrupt the video here for a short explanation of what mnemonics are a mnemonic device is any learning technique that aids information retention or retrieval in the human memory for a better understanding common mnemonics are in auditory forms such as short poems acronyms or memorable phrases but they can also be visual and kinesthetic forms you know, this principle can be applied in many different ways and for note taking i really want you guys to also try this i think it is not only important to structure your notes but it's also important to make sure you structure them in accordance with the ultimate purpose you want to use them for we have the angle we have the structure so now let's talk about time management that's right time management applies to language learning and so the third advice I want to give you is to make sure that the note taking you're doing is worth your time. Guys, study time spent wisely is the key to fast language learning. It's not about the thousands of hours you will pour into one specific language study. It's about how you use these hours. When it comes to taking notes specifically, I've come to realize that you need to ask yourself how long will it take you to take the notes you're about to take. Maybe it's 20 minutes, maybe it's two hours. Once you figure that out, what is the time ratio spent taking these notes versus the time saved later on your review and digestion of those notes? In other words, is it worth your time? We're doing a simple math calculation here. The bottom line is that it's actually demotivating. Spending hours taking notes that I wouldn't end up using afterwards is just demotivating. Right, so we are almost done. And my fourth and last advice is to stay flexible. I've talked about flexibility a lot on this channel and also on my Instagram. And I do think that flexibility in any kind of time management uh, technique or study technique is absolutely crucial. With regards to flexibility in note-taking, we're talking about what kind of note-taking method you're using. Again, so what kind of structure, for example, you'll be using for your notes. There is no one-fits-all note-taking method. You can absolutely use as many as you want. You also need to stay flexible on the device you're using to take the notes. So, you know, we're not only talking about notebooks here. It can be, of course, taking notes digitally. It can be handwritten but it can also be uh, typed. It can also be voice records, your own voice records. So to recap the four things we talked about today, taking notes without an angle is useless. You should always structure your notes and you should always structure them based on the angle you've chosen for them. You should always ask yourself before you take any notes, is it worth my time to take these notes? And then it is important to stay flexible. And that wraps up the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope you gain useful insights from today's video. If there is any topic that you want me to cover in a future video, please leave it down below because I read all the comments you guys leave me. A lot of the videos I've done already were actually suggestions from you guys. So thank you for always inspiring me and I hope to see you in another video. Bye bye!